here is a nice animal joke for you. It's about a tortoise being robbed. A tortoise went out for a couple of beers at his local pub. He had too much to drink for the evening, but he still decided to walk home through the rough part of town. Knowing the risk, he walked as quickly as he could. Halfway home, he was stopped by four snails in an alley who beat him senselessly. They stole what little money he still had left and sprayed some paint onto his shell to disgrace the old tortoise. Utterly distraught, he went to the local police station to make a case of robbery against his assailants. A fox inspector on duty took his affidavit and asked if he could remember anything about the assailants. The tortoise, looking very sad, said, I don't know. It all happened so fast. <laughs> Here is a short joke about a teacher testing her class with numbers and little Johnny. Mrs. Johnson stood before her class. All right, class, let's play a game. Give me any number you like. Little Susie shouted, 21. Mrs. Johnson's wrote a bold 12 on the boards. Mrs. Johnson looks at the class and waits for any reaction from the kids, but nothing. She then said, next number, please. Tommy shouted, 45. Mrs. Johnson wrote 54, but still no reaction from the class. Mrs. Johnson pressed on, calling for more numbers, butchering each one deliberately. Finally, she turned to little Johnny, the redhead and prankster. Johnny, give me a number, any number. Johnny, a mischievous glint in his eyes, slowly leaned back in his chair and said, how about 33, Mrs. Johnson? Let's see if you can screw this one up too. <laughs> Do you also hate driving around looking for a parking in a parking lot? A man drives to the local mall to go do some shopping. He had been driving around and around for quite some time, struggling to find a parking spot, but all the parking were taken. He then started to pray for an open parking spot. Lord, he said, I can't stand this. If you open a space up for me, I swear I'll give up the drinking and the fishing and go to mass every Sunday. Suddenly, the clouds part and the sun shines on an empty parking spot. Without hesitation, the man says, Never mind, I just found one. <laughs> now, here is a nice joke about a memory stick. This guy and his friend used to meet in the pub for a beer once a week on the same evening. No matter what happens, they will have their weekly meeting. However, this week, the friend did not pitch for the weekly beer at the pub, and the guy knew that something big must have happened. So, he phoned his friend. The friend said that he is watching his boy, who swallowed his memory stick over the weekend. Since then, the boy has been singing all the songs that were on the memory stick. The guy said that it does not seem to be such a big problem then. His friend replied that he is watching the boy to ensure he does not get to his videos. <laughs> this wife was constantly complaining about her husband not giving her enough attention. While he was sitting watching a football match, his wife walks up to him. She pulled the curtains open and looked through the window at the neighbors. She said to her husband, just look at Jack next door. He always holds his wife's hand. He always opens the car's door for her, and he always kiss her when she goes to work. Why can you not do the same? The husband stood up, looked through the window at the neighbor's wife. Then he looks back at his wife and said, Are you out of your mind? There's no way I am going to kiss that woman. <laughs> In today's funny short joke, we bring you a lady that fell deeply in love with her dentist. Not long after she fell in love with him, they started having an affair. The woman now started to visit the dentist every second week, and this went on for months. One day on her visit to the dentist, he informed her that they must stop having this affair. Very disappointed, the woman wanted to know why the dentist now have this change of heart. She made it clear to him that her husband was not expecting anything at all and that he should not be concerned. The dentist replied, If we don't stop the affair now and we pull a tooth at each one of your visits, 
you will soon not have any teeth left in your mouth. <laughs> this funny short is a teenager and dad joke. This shy 16-year-old approaches her dad and sits next to him on the couch. Dad, there's something my boyfriend said that's confusing, she mumbles. What's that, honey? The dad asks, bracing himself for teenage drama. He complimented me, but weirdly? And I don't understand what he meant by it. He said, I have a beautiful chassis, lovely airbags, and a fantastic bumper. The dad chokes on his coffee, doing his best impression of a sputtering car engine. He said, chassis, airbags? Then he gleamed at his daughter and spoke. You tell that boyfriend of yours that your father says, he leans in, voice low. If he even thinks about popping the bonnet, checking for oil with his dipstick, I'll personally find him and tighten his lug nuts so fast his headlights will pop out and he will start leaking out of his exhaust pipe. Bill, this very wealthy millionaire was 72 years old and got married to this lovely young lady of 25 years old. Everyone was amassed by Bill's feet of still attracting such a beautiful young woman. At the wedding reception, his best friend just had to ask him. Now tell me, Bill, what on earth did you do to get this lovely young lady to agree to marry you? Well, Bill replied, nothing special. I just told her I was a millionaire and 95 years old, and she fell deeply in love with me. Now here is a funny short joke about a laptop computer. This friend of mine told me that his wife liked to work in bed with her laptop computer. One day she put the laptop next to her bed on the floor while taking a nap. Her mother came into the room while the wife was asleep and saw this thing lying on the floor. She thought that it was a bathroom scale and went and stood on it. Now, this friend of mine is very angry. He reckons his mother-in-law weighs $2,000. This man gets to his plane seat for a flight. To his surprise, there is a parrot strapped into the seat next to him. When the stewardess came around, he asked for some coffee. The parrot shouted, get me a whiskey, you moron. The stewardess immediately brings the parrot a whiskey, but forgets the coffee. The man points this out, but the parrot again yells, get me another whiskey, you fool. Upset. The stewardess brings a whiskey for the parrot, but still no coffee. The man takes the parrot's approach. I've asked you twice, get me my coffee, you moron. Just then, two disguised security personnel grabs both him and the parrot, take them to the emergency exits and throw them out of the plane. On their way down, the parrot says, for someone who can't fly, you are pretty brave. This husband was working on the roof of his home. The wife was in the shower. There was a knock at the door, and the husband shouted down to his wife to answer it. But I am in the shower, she protested. Well, I am on the roof, and I can't come down now. So, she quickly wrapped a bath towel around herself and went to answer the door. It was the neighbor who took one look at her and said, Tell you what, you unwrap that towel and give me a flash and I'll give you $800. She thought about it, and as quick as a flash, opened the towel and wrapped herself up again. He handed her $800 and went off smiling. Later, the husband asked, who was at the door just now? It was the neighbor, she replied. Oh, he said, did he bring the $800 he owes me? This old man was sitting at the bus stop waiting for the bus. He had his walking cane with him and was constantly tapping it onto the ground to get the time by, waiting for the bus. A man with eight children joined him at the bus stop. The children were all different age and reminded the old man of the flumes of a church organ. He kept on tapping his cane on the ground in anticipation of the bus's arrival. Eventually the bus pulled in and the bus driver said to them, there are too many of you for the bus. The bus then drove off again. Patiently, the old man kept tapping his cane on the ground. As it irritated the father, he said, Old man, 
you should put a piece of rubber on the tip of that thing. The old man replied, if you have put a piece of rubber on the tip of that thing, winking at the man's pants, we would have all be home already. <laughs> Three little boys were playing in the street when they were hit by a truck. They all went to heaven, and the angel said to them, you weren't supposed to die. You were all supposed to live out your lives. This was not your time. To make it up to you, I'll let each one of you choose what you want to do with your life. You must run and jump on that cloud over there, and as you are flying back to Earth, shout what you want to do, and so it shall be. The first boy jumped and shouted, Lawyer. And so 20 years later, he was a very successful lawyer in town. The second boy jumped and shouted, Brain Surgeon. And 20 years later, he was the best brain surgeon in his field. The third boy went to jump, but tripped over his feet and stumbled off the cloud muttering, stupid, clumsy idiot. And so, 20 years later, he was playing for the Manchester United as a striker. <laughs> this teacher asks the class, What do we get from chickens? Oh, wonderful. Look at all the hands. Yes, Mary. Teacher, we get eggs and we get meat. Wow, that's correct, Mary. Well done. Now tell me, class, what do we get from sheep? Lots of hand, I see. Mmm, yes, Billy. Teacher, from sheep we get wool, we get chops. Oh, and then we get that nice leg of lamb, which Mommy does in the oven. Well done, Billy. Now tell me, class, what do we get from a pig? Yes, Sarah. Teacher, we get bacon and spare ribs. Well done, Sarah. My, but this class is very sharp today. Now, can anyone tell me what we get from a cow? Now, little Johnny just cannot contain himself anymore. He jumps up and down. OK, Johnny, I haven't forgotten about you. So what do we get from a cow? From a cow teacher, we get homework. <laughs> this guy went to visit the psychiatrist with a huge problem. He told the psychiatrist that his wife is continuously having affairs. She is not even discreet about it, which would have made him feel much better. The psychiatrist asked how the man knew about this. Well, the man explained, every evening his wife goes to Harry's pub to have a couple of drinks. While there, she will go and sleep with everyone who asks her. The guy explained that this was making him mad and that he doesn't know what to do anymore. The psychiatrist, after listening to the man's story, said, First, sir, you must calm down, then you can think clearly. A problem is always bigger than what it seems, the psychiatrist then asks. Now tell me, sir, where exactly is Harry's bar? <laughs> this funny short is a teenager and dad joke. This shy 16-year-old approaches her dad and sits next to him on the couch. Dad, there's something my boyfriend said that's confusing, she mumbles. What's that, honey? The dad asks, bracing himself for teenage drama. He complimented me. But, weirdly? And I don't understand what he meant by it. He said, I have a beautiful chassis, lovely airbags, and a fantastic bumper. The dad chokes on his coffee, doing his best impression of a sputtering car engine. He said, chassis? Airbags? Then he gleamed at his daughter and spoke. You tell that boyfriend of yours that your father says, he leans in, voice low, if he even thinks about popping the bonnet, checking for oil with his dipstick, I'll personally find him and tighten his lug nuts so fast his headlights will pop out and he will start leaking out of his exhaust pipe. Three riders were attending a convention and booked a suite on the 75th floor of a hotel. They arrived at the hotel and was told the elevator is broken they will have to take the stairs. Jack writes funny stories, Eddie writes of scary stories, and Carl writes sad stories. They agreed to make it less boring. Jack would tell funniest stories from floors 1 to 25, Eddie tells scariest stories from floor 26 to 50, and Carl sad stories from floor 50 to 75. They started their climb, and Jack tell funny stories, by the time they reached the 25th floor, Eddie and Carl were hysterical. Now Eddie tells scary stories. By the time they reached the 50th floor, Jack and Carl were in total fear. 
then Carl started. I'll tell my saddest story first. He said, there once was a man named Carl who forgot the hotel room key in the car. <laughs> An old lady got married to this 85-year-old bachelor. As he has never been with a woman before, he was obviously surprisingly active with the lovemaking. No matter where she went or what she was busy with, that was all he wanted to do. She decided to write to an advice column and ask for some advice. Here is what she wrote. Dear editor, I have married an old bachelor and I think that I have made a big mistake. He just cannot keep his hands of me and wants to make love the whole time. He comes at me 24 hours a day when I'm having a shower, when I'm scrubbing the floor, before breakfast and after dinner. He is quite impossible and I don't know what to do. Please, can you give me some advice? P.S. Please excuse the jerky handwriting. <laughs> An 85-year-old man married a 25-year-old woman. She insists they have two separate bedrooms so that he could relax and regain his strength after each time they made love. On the first night, the old man performed extremely well and then retired to his own bedroom. A few minutes passed and there was a knock at the door. He came in and the two had another wonderful session. This impressed the young bride very much. He had hardly left to go to his own bedroom when a few minutes later, there was yet another knock at the door. Sure, enough the old fellow was at his best once more. The bride, now thoroughly satisfied with the old stallion said, you know, you are very, very good. I have been to bed with men less than half your age, and they weren't nearly as good as you. How on earth do you manage? The old man replied, Do you mean I was here already? <laughs> this old man was sitting at the bus stop waiting for the bus. He had his walking cane with him and was constantly tapping it onto the ground to get the time by, waiting for the bus. A man with eight children joined him at the bus stop. The children were all different age and reminded the old man of the flumes of a church organ. He kept on tapping his cane on the ground in anticipation of the bus's arrival. Eventually the bus pulled in and the bus driver said to them, there are too many of you for the bus. The bus then drove off again. Patiently, the old man kept tapping his cane on the ground. As it irritated the father, he said, old man, you should put a piece of rubber on the tip of that thing. The old man replied, if you have put a piece of rubber on the tip of that thing, winking at the man's pants, we would have all be home already. <laughs> <laughs> old people are not cold people. This 70-year-old lady went the doctor for a checkup. After the examination, the doctor said, Ma'am, I have either good news or bad news for you. You are pregnant. This is truly a medical wonder at 70 years, and I hope you and your husband will know how to deal with this. The doctor then proposes that the old lady phone her husband directly from his surgery to see how he will deal with this unexpected news. The old lady was left alone to phone her husband. After the phone rang for about a minute, as the old man was not so mobile anymore and was not hearing so well, he answered the phone. The old lady said, you old tiger, you once again did it, I am pregnant. The old man was quiet for a couple of seconds and then he slowly said, who's talking? <laughs> this old man and his wife walk out of a shopping center to find a police officer writing out a ticket. He rushed off to the car and shouted to the officer, what the hell are you doing? The officer immediately starts to write another ticket for a crack in the windshield. Are you mad? The old man shouted. The officer immediately starts to write a ticket for the car's license that have expired. The old man was now angry and shouted, you have got nothing better to do with your time. Why don't you get a proper job? With this, another ticket was written. At that point, a bus pulled up, the old man said to the officer with a smile. You should have a nice day, officer, walked away and climbed onto the bus. And the poor guy whose car it was, never mind, because the bumper sticker read, I love Trump. <laughs> 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 
A man was trying out his new sports car when he went through a speed trap. He decided to put his foot down in attempt to lose the traffic officer. A glance in his rearview mirror revealed his worst fears. The traffic officer was gaining on him. He decided to pull over. Within a second, the officer was standing next to him, ticket book in hand. Unless you have a very good story to tell me, said the officer. I will have to give you the biggest fine of your life. Well, officer, said the man. One of the officers at the traffic department ran off with my wife the other day. What has that got to do with your speeding like this? Asked the traffic officer. When I saw you approaching from the rear, said the offender, I thought you were that traffic officer bringing back my wife. This husband was working on the roof of his home. The wife was in the shower. There was a knock at the door, and the husband shouted down to his wife to answer it. But I am in the shower, she protested. Well, I am on the roof, and I can't come down now. So, she quickly wrapped a bath towel around herself and went to answer the door. It was the neighbor who took one look at her and said, Tell you what, you unwrap that towel and give me a flash and I'll give you $800. She thought about it, and as quick as a flash, opened the towel and wrapped herself up again. He handed her $800 and went off smiling. Later, the husband asked, who was at the door just now? It was the neighbor, she replied. Oh, he said, did he bring the $800 he owes me? Growing old is inevitable. However, growing up is optional. <laughs> you know that you are getting old when happy hour is having an afternoon nap. <laughs> you know that you are getting old when getting lucky means being able to still find your car in a parking lot. <laughs> you know that you are getting old when you don't have to read history books because you still remember all the events. <laughs> you know that you are getting old when the candles on your cake cost much more than the birthday cake itself. <laughs> An elderly couple had lived in the flight path of the local aerodrome all their lives and never complained about the noise factor. A senior pilot heard of this and decided to take them for a flight as a way of showing appreciation. He called on them and asked whether they had ever flown before and was surprised to hear they had not. He took them to the airport and helped them into the back of a small plane and said to them, now you don't have to say a word, just sit back and enjoy the flight. They took off and the pilot decided to do a few aerobatics to make it more interesting for them. After a half an hour of flight, he landed the plane again, opened the door at the back, and asked, Well, did you enjoy the flight? The old man replied, Yes, indeed. I nearly let out a yell, though, when my wife fell out, but I... <laughs> this doctor and his wife had an argument one morning prior to the doctor leaving for his surgery. Just as the doctor left the front door of his house, he shouted to his wife, and by the way, you mean nothing in bed to me. Later that morning, the doctor felt very bad about the comment he shouted to his wife and decided to phone her to apologize for his behavior that morning. As the phone just kept ringing, he got very concerned, but eventually the wife answered the phone being very out of breath. Why did you take so long to answer the phone and why are you so out of breath? The doctor asked. I was thinking about that comment I made this morning and wanted to phone you. The wife responded, following your comment to me this morning, I thought it a good idea to get a second opinion to your comment. <laughs> a businessman went into a pub, looking as miserable as can be after a long day at the office, sat down at the bar, and ordered a double scotch on the rocks. After he finished the drink, he peeked inside his pocket 
with a big frown on his face, ordered the barman to bring him another double scotch. After he finished that one, he again peeked inside his shirt pocket. Again he has that frown look on his face, and with a huge sigh ordered the barman to bring him another double scotch. Finally, the barman said, Look, buddy, I'll bring you drinks all night long, but you've got to tell me why you keep peering into your shirt pocket before you order. The customer replied, I'm looking at a photo of my wife that I keep in my pocket. When she starts to look good, then I know it's time to go home. <laughs> Three little boys were playing in the street when they were hit by a truck. They all went to heaven, and the angel said to them, You weren't supposed to die. You were all supposed to live out your lives. This was not your time. To make it up to you, I'll let each one of you choose what you want to do with your life. You must run and jump on that cloud over there, and as you are flying back to Earth, shout what you want to do, and so it shall be. The first boy jumped and shouted, Lawyer, and so 20 years later he was a very successful lawyer in town. The second boy jumped and shouted, Brain Surgeon, and 20 years later he was the best brain surgeon in his field. The third boy went to jump but tripped over his feet and stumbled off the cloud muttering, stupid, clumsy idiot. And so, 20 years later, he was playing for the Manchester United as a striker. <laughs> the monkey and the hyena were walking through the bush talking. The hyena bravely tells the monkey he is not scared of anyone in the animal kingdom. I'm telling you with my strong teeth there will be no way to escape. So, the monkey asks, What about the lion? He is strong, fierce, and the king. You must be afraid of him. No, said the hyena. I am not afraid of the lion. He can take me on any time. Monkey says he is also not afraid of anyone. You can call on me any time for help. Suddenly, the lion jumped through the bush and started attacking the hyena. The monkey ran up the nearest tree and watched the fight. After the fight, the hyena is badly injured, asked the monkey, why you not helped me? The monkey replied, well, you laughed so loudly, I thought you are winning. <laughs> Let's think about bad politicians and Idi Amin, the ruthless leader of Uganda, rings a bell. This ruthless leader was driving along a country road in his limousine when he saw some of his countrymen sitting next to the road, eating grass. They stopped to ask the men why they were eating the grass. They replied that they had no money for food. Then you must come to me at once, said the politician. But what about our wives, they asked. Bring them along, the politician replied. They battled to get everyone into the limousine, and they all thanked the politician and said that it's very kind of him to help them all like that. It's a pleasure, the politician replied. You are going to love the place. We are going to. The grass is almost a meter high. <laughs> as far as sports jokes go, this hilarious joke can be applied to any non-performing sports team. Now, as far as the NFL goes, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are leading this non-performing race. This farmer had some family members coming to visit, and as there is not a lot to do for the family on the farm, as far as entertainment is concerned, the farmer's wife thought it a good idea to arrange an outing for the men. She wanted them to go and watch a match of, you guessed it, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. She phoned the stadium and asked if there were still any places left for the upcoming weekend's game. The guy on the other end of the phone responded, oh, for sure, we have places left. For this weekend, we still need a center and quarterback. <laughs> History is not always very clear, but here is story to tell when having a fire and a couple of beers. Before the Battle of Agincourt in 1415, the French, anticipating victory over the English, proposed to cut of all the captured soldiers' middle finger. Without the middle finger, these soldiers would never be able to again draw the famous longbow in war against the French. The bow was made of the English yew tree, 
and the act of drawing the bow was known as plucking the yew. The French became very bewildered when it was the English that won a major battle, when then started teasing the French by showing them the middle finger and shouting pluck you. Since pluck you was difficult to say, the English eventually changed the P and the L in pluck you with an F. The middle finger and the wording that came with it was born. On the luxury train to Manchester, the supporters had arrived in their droves from the north to give support to Manchester United for their game against Liverpool. One supporter had even brought his wife and her little poodle along. At Birmingham Station, an American boarded the train and could not find a seat. He looked around and saw the little poodle occupying a seat. In typical American drawl, he said, Pardon me, ma'am, but could I sit on that seat while you hold your dog on your lap? No, said the oversized woman. That's my little doggy's seat. The American grabbed the dog and threw it out of the window, then sat down. After her screams had died down, her husband said, You know I don't understand you Americans. You call a tap a faucet. You call a lift an elevator. You drive on the wrong side of the road. And now you have gone and thrown the wrong bitch out of the window. <laughs> Three farmers each bought train tickets to a nearby city to go watch a major football game. Next to them, three city slickers bought only one ticket for three for the train to the same game. The farmers asked them, why only one ticket? Watch and learn were their response. Once in the train, the three city slickers squeezed into the bathroom and waited for the ticket conductor to came past. The conductor knocked on the door and said, ticket please. One of them stick his hand out and handed over the ticket. The conductor left. After the game, the farmers only bought one ticket for the three of them. The city slickers bought no ticket. The farmers asked how that will work. Watch and learn, they responded. Once in the train, the farmers all squeezed into the bathroom. One of the city slickers went to the bathroom door, knocked on it and said, tickets please. <laughs> Two elderly ladies were sitting on a park bench outside the local town hall where a flower show was in progress. They talked about the good old days. The one elderly lady said to her friend, Life is so boring now that we are old. For $10 I would take off my clothes and streak through that stupid flower show. Just for some fun. You're on, said the other old lady, holding up a $10 note. As fast as she could, the first elderly lady fumbled her way out of her clothes and, completely naked, streaked through the front door of the flower show. Waiting outside, her friend soon heard a huge commotion inside the hall, followed by a loud applause. The naked lady burst through the door surrounded by a cheering crowd. She shouted, I won first prize as best dried fruit arrangement. This aspiring politician decided to run for office. He will have to do everything possible to gather votes. As he was driving through one of his constituencies, he saw a guy on a bicycle falling in the road. He thought, here is a chance to gather one vote. Did you get hurt? I can help you, asked the politician. I'm okay, the guy replied. But if you didn't get hurt, your bicycle must be damaged, the politician said. The guy said, I'm okay and my bicycle is okay, I don't need any help. The politician then said, look, I am a politician, let me take you home, and all I would require from you is to vote for me. The guy looked at the annoying politician and said, sir, I fell on my butt, not on my head. <laughs> Sometimes the simples of mistakes can be so confusing. This estate agent had just heard about the death of one of his clients, but because of work pressure, could not take the time off to attend the client's funeral. He had just signed a big lease agreement, and his new tenant was moving in on the same day as his client's funeral. The estate agent thoughtfully decided to send flowers to both the deceased family as well to the new tenant, so an order was placed with the local florist. Unfortunately, the florist got the messages mixed up. 
the new tenant received his flowers with the very confusing message that read, rest in peace. The flowers that were delivered to the funeral, however, were largely displayed at the grave with the message, enjoy your new accommodation. Mr. Jones went into a pub for a beer. He watched the barman with amusement, saw the barman pour a beer into a tankard, then add milk and a raw egg, stirred it up, and downed the cocktail. Mr. Jones was very amused by this and asked, how can you drink that stuff? The barman looked at Mr. Jones and replied, first of all, it has nothing to do with you. Secondly, I like it. And thirdly, it puts lead in my pencil if you know what I mean. Mr. Jones. Very impressed thought that the next time his friend came over to visit, he will mix that same cocktail that the bartender made. So it happened. His friend came over and he stirred up the drink and drank it all down. His friend immediately asked, how can you drink that stuff? Mr. Jones replied, first, it has nothing to do with you. Secondly, I like it. And thirdly, I write with a big ballpoint pen. Our first joke of the day is about a lady that was getting married for the fourth time. The local news station was interviewing an 80-year-old lady because she had just gotten married for the fourth time. The interviewer asked what her new husband's occupation was. He's a funeral director, she answered. Interesting, the newsman thought. He asked her if she wouldn't mind telling him about her first three husbands and what they did for a living. After a short period, a smile came to her face and she answered, explaining that she first married a banker when she was in her 20s, circus ringmaster in her 40s, preacher in her 60s, and now funeral director in her 80s. The interviewer, quite astonished, asked why she married four men with such diverse careers. She smiled. I married one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, and four to go. <laughs> Our second joke of the day is about a classroom and some large expectations. The grade eight teacher asked the class, what part of the body enlarges 10 times its normal size when it gets stimulated? Mary stands up and says, teacher, you are not allowed to ask that type of question. I will tell my parents and they will have you fired. The teacher ignores her and asks the question again. Mary says to the kids around her, if she will not listen, she will be in a lot of trouble. The teacher, still ignoring her, asks the same question again to the class. Johnny hesitantly stands up and says, it's the pupil of the eye, teacher. Very good, Johnny, she says while turning to Marie before she goes on. And you, young lady, I've got three things to tell you. Firstly, you have a dirty mind. Secondly, you did not do your homework. And thirdly, one day you will be very, very disappointed. <laughs> Our third joke of the day is about an old couple and a diner. The husband said to his wife, do you remember 50 years ago we made love behind the diner? Yes, I remember it well. The husband then said, how about taking a stroll there again and we do it for old time's sake? The wife said, you old devil, that sounds like a great idea. A police officer overheard the conversation, had a chuckle, and decided to go and see this. The elderly couple, battling to walk, finally got to the back of the diner. Once there, they erupted into the most furious lovemaking the officer could imagine. After a while, the elderly couple fell to the ground in exhaustion. The officer went to them and asked what their secret was for having that much passion. Shaking and barely able to reply, the old man says, 50 years ago, there was no electric fence here. <laughs> Our fourth joke of the day is about a nun that visits a bar. This nun was in town and desperately needed to use a bathroom. The first place she could find was this bar. The place was very alive. When she got to the bar, all the bar's lights went off and everyone cheered. The lights then came on again. Not knowing bar culture, she made nothing of this. She asked the barman if she could use the ladies. Sure, he said. 
but I must warn you there is a statue of a naked man with a leaf over his private parts, in the ladies. No problem, said the nun. I will look the other way. So, the barman pointed her to the restroom. On getting out of the restroom, everyone cheered her, and the barman said, Here's a drink. You are now one of us. What's this all about? she asked. The barman said, Every time someone lifts the leave of the statue, the bar's lights go off. <laughs> Our fifth joke of the day is about a young couple that died and went to heaven. One morning, this young couple, deeply in love, were on their way to church to get married. On the way there, the man lost control of the car and slammed into a tree, killing them both instantly. The couple soon found themselves standing in front of the gates of heaven. The young women asked the angel if they could get married in heaven, since their time on earth was cut so short. The angel replied that he will get back to her on her request. A month later, the angel brought them good news. They can get married. The women then asked the angel, just wondering if things don't work out. Will we be able to get a divorce here in heaven? With a stern look in his eye, the angel said, Look, lady, it took me a month to find a priest up here. Do you really think I'm going to be able to find a lawyer? <laughs> Our sixth joke of the day is a joke about a restaurant and eating a steak. John went to a fancy steakhouse restaurant. As he sat down, the waiter immediately brought steak to his table. Very impressive, John said. As the waiter was about to walk away, John calls him over and said, I can't eat this steak, and pointed at his plate. No problem, sir. I will take this steak back and bring you a new one immediately. After a while, the waiter came out with a new steak and puts it in front of John. Just as the waiter was about to leave, John calls the waiter back again and says, I can't eat this steak, and points at his plate. Without saying a word, the waiter grabs the plate and heads to the kitchen. Moments later, the chef storms out of the kitchen doors straight to John. Why can't you eat the steak? John replies, because I don't have a knife or fork. <laughs> Our seventh joke of the day is about an old farmer and a lesbian. An old farmer sat down at the bar and ordered a drink. As he sat sipping his drink, a young woman sat down. She turned to the farmer and asked, are you a real farmer? Yes, I am. I've spent my whole life breaking colts, milking cows, and planting crops. So I guess I am a real farmer. What are you? I'm a lesbian. As soon as I get up in the morning, I think about women. When I shower, when I watch TV. I even think about women when I eat. It seems that everything makes me think of women. The two sat sipping their drinks in silence. Once the woman finished her drink, she left. A little while later, a man sat down on the other side of the old man and asked, Are you a real farmer? He replied, Well, I always thought I was, but I just found out I'm a lesbian. <laughs> In our eight joke of the day, these three friends go hunting. Three friends decide to go hunting. The one is a lawyer, the second a doctor, and the third a priest. While walking through the bush, they saw a bald goat. All three of them eagerly shoots the bald goat. The bald goat immediately fell to the ground and the three friends run over. When they get there, they see the bald goat is dead, but there is just one bullet hole. Whose shot killed the bald goat is the question. A debate follows between the friends till the owner of the game farm arrived. The owner experienced in the field of hunting says he can resolve this issue between the friends. He investigates the dead bald goat and announces it is the priest who shot the bald goat. All three friends are dumbstruck and wants to know how the owner knew the priest killed the bald goat. Well, it's actually quite easy, says the owner. Look here, the bullet went into one ear and out the other. <laughs> In our ninth joke of the day, this wife is having an affair. A man suspects his wife of having an affair. He returns home a day earlier from his holiday with the late night flight and gets a taxi to take him home. When they got to the house, he asked the taxi driver if he will come in with him. If he catches his wife cheating, 
he has a witness who can testify of her affair. So, they silently went into the house and up the stairs to the bedroom. He pulls the sheets off and puts the light on. There, his wife is laying in bed with another man. He pulls out his gun and points it at the man while the wife is begging him not to shoot. I lied to you, I did not win the lotto. He was the one paying for the holidays, the fancy cars, and this big house. Shocked, the man lowers his pistol and asks the taxi driver what he would do. The taxi driver said, I will cover him up nice and warm so he does not get sick. <laughs> In our 10th joke of the day, this old lady wants to meet an old gentleman. Getting older is not for sissies. The body gives in, then the mind gives in. Funny how old people can remember vividly what they did as a child, but they can't remember where they have put their dentures. But that's the process of aging for you. So, this old lady went to a bar to see if she could win the company of an older gentleman. This might just rekindle her youth and keep her going for another decade or so and give her someone to share her memories with. She went to sit down at the bar when an old handsome looking gentleman walked into the bar and sat down next to her. Here was the opportunity she was hoping for. She turned to look at this gentleman and then he said, so, do I come here often? <laughs> Our 11th joke of the day is about applying for old age pension. An old retired man was standing in a long queue waiting to apply for old age pension. But when it was his turn, he realized he forgot his ID book at home. So, the lady behind the counter feels sorry for the old man and says he must unbutton his shirt. The lady behind the counter then looks at the old man's gray chest hair attentively. She tells the old man, you can close your shirt now, I can see clearly that you are old enough. So, she stamps the form and approve his old age pension. When the old man got home, he tells his wife what happened at the social security offices. The wife listened to her husband and started scolding her husband. You had a golden opportunity. If you had unbuttoned your pants, you could also qualify for disability. <laughs> In our 12th joke of the day, this young girl asks her father about evolution. Evolution? Oh yes. Imagine life's a giant costume party, millions of years long. Everyone starts with a bedsheet toga. Over time, the party host, nature, throws random costume accessories. Some get lucky with wings, birds. Some get stuck with a giant schnoz, elephants. If your costume helps you to snack and avoid getting eaten, you get to stay. Everyone keeps tweaking their look, generation after generation, until BAM! You're rocking a smartphone and wondering why your tailbone itches. That's evolution, baby! So, this little girl came and sat on her dad's lap. Dad, she said. Today in school, the teacher spoke about evolution. She said that all of us humans came from apes. Is that so? The dad, not knowing anything about these things, said, I just don't know mommy's family that well. <laughs> In our 13th joke of the day, little Johnny just can't stop lying. Johnny loves to exaggerate. Monday morning, he came to school and tells his teacher he went fishing. We caught 50 fish, and the one fish was almost 60 pounds. Really, Johnny? That's a lot off fish? The teacher knows Johnny by now and decides to play along diplomatically to see if she can teach him not to tell lies. Well, Johnny, you won't believe me, but something terrible happened to me this weekend. Me and my kids took a short way through the field when all off a sudden a lion attacked us. But a small Jack Russell dog came running through the bush and defended us. He lifted the lion in his mouth and shook it so hard that you can hear the lion's neck break. Do you believe what I am telling you, Johnny? Yes, of course that Jack Russell was my dog. He can easily kill a lion because he once killed an elephant. <laughs> In this last joke of the day, we let the genie out of the lamp. A sales representative, administrative clerk, and the manager walked to a restaurant for lunch. On the way, they saw this old antique shop and decided to pop in and have a look. They see this old antique lamp and rub it. 
Suddenly, a genie appeared. Thanks, I am free. Out of gratitude, I grant each one of you a wish. The sale representative went first. I want to go on a yacht cruise through the Bahamas. Poof, and he's gone. The administrative clerk then said, I want to go to Hawaii and lay on the beach drinking endless pina colada with my dream man massaging me. Poof, she's also gone. The genie turns to the manager and says, It's your turn now. What is your wish? The manager, a dutiful person who takes his work serious, says without hesitation, I want those two back at the office after lunch. <laughs> Our first joke of the day is a joke about a barber shop. A young boy enters a barber shop and the barber whispers to his customer, This is the dumbest kid in the world. Watch while I prove it to you. The barber puts a dollar bill in one hand and two quarters in the other, then calls the boy over and asks, Which do you want, son? Then the boy takes the quarters and leaves. What did I tell you? said the barber and laughs. That kid never learns. I have been doing this for weeks, but this kid is dumb. Later, when the customer leaves, he sees the same young boy coming out the ice cream parlor. Hey, son, come here. May I ask you a question? Why did you take the quarters instead of the dollar bill? The boy with a big smile on his face licked his cone and replied, because the day I take the dollar, the game is over. <laughs> Our next joke is about a clever lawyer and a police officer. A lawyer runs a stop sign and gets pulled over by a deputy. He thinks he is smarter than the deputy because he is a lawyer and decides to have some fun with the deputy. The deputy says, license and registration, please. What for? Says the lawyer. You didn't stop at the sign. The lawyer says, I slowed down. No one was coming. You did not stop, says the deputy. What's the difference? Ask the lawyer. The difference is you must stop. That's the law. Lawyer says, if you show me the difference between slow down and stop, I'll give you my license and registration. If not, you let me go without a ticket. That sounds fair. Please exit your vehicle, sir, the deputy says. At this point, the deputy takes out his baton and starts beating the lawyer and says, do you want me to stop or just slow down? <laughs> the following joke is about a big game hunter and his mother-in-law. A big game hunter took his wife and against his will, his mother-in-law with him on a trip to a big five game farm. They had only been there for a day when the hunter and his mother-in-law had a huge fight and she decided to go on a walk by herself. Later that day, they noticed that the mother-in-law did not return yet. His wife was frantic and begged him to go look for her. He took his rifle and he set off with his wife through the bush. A few hours of searching and they came across the mother-in-law lying flat on her back with a huge lion standing spread-eagled over her. The wife frantically screams at the hunter as he stood and watched for a while. Are you going to do anything? No replied the hunter. That lion got himself into this mess. <laughs> in our next joke, a mother-in-law try to resolve a family issue. Here is the best story about a mother-in-law and an affair ever. So this mother-in-law came to visit her daughter and son-in-law. But on her arrival, she noticed the husband being very annoyed. What's wrong, she asked. The husband explained that he was on a business trip and send her daughter, his wife, an email to say that he will be home a day earlier. But when he arrived home, he found his wife in bed with another man. It's over, we are getting a divorce, the man said. So, the mother-in-law said that her daughter would never do that, as she educated her better and something sounds wrong, but said that she will quickly go find out what's going on. So, after a few minutes, she came to her son-in-law laughing, I told you something must be wrong and that she would never do that. The mother-in-law then said, but she never got your email. <laughs> Have you ever heard a joke about a pit bull? Well, here is one. You ever seen a funeral procession with two hearses? Crazy, right? Well, this woman witnessed this one morning. There was even a woman walking her pit bull calmly behind the procession, followed by a massive line of female mourners. Curiosity got the better of her, so she approached the woman with the dog. 
Excuse me, she said. My condolences, but this is like no funeral I've ever seen. What happened here? The woman with the dog sighed. My husband's in the first hearse. My dog, well, he wasn't happy with him during an argument with me. After a beat of silence, the woman said, and the second hearse is for my mother-in-law. She tried to help her son, the woman said flatly. After another beat of silence, the woman asked, can I borrow your dog? The woman with the pit bull blurted out, honey, you will have to get in the line. <laughs> so, what is a drunken husband supposed to do when he gets home? Our next joke is trying to explain. This guy got home very late one evening after drinking with some friends. When he was close to his house, he turned off the headlights, put the car in neutral, and coasted up to his house. He entered very quietly, took off his shoes, and closed the front door very quietly. Carrying his shoes, he tiptoed up the stairs and into his bedroom. At that point, his wife rolled over and shouted, Where the hell have you been till four in the morning? His friends later told him that he should take another approach. When nearing your house, his friend said, turn the headlights to bright, gun the engine and roar up the house. After you squeal to a stop, get out, slam the car door. Now you must slam the door to your house and tromp up the stairs singing, I'm in the mood for love. It is guaranteed that the wife will be fast asleep. <laughs> in the following joke, this guy has some serious family issues. A man walks into a bar and tells the bartender, Give me a double shot of whiskey now. Everything okay? The bartender asks. No, says the man. I just found out my brother is gay and he's been secretly dating my best friend. Oh man, says the bartender. That's messed up. A few days later, the same man enters the bar again. Give me a double of what I had last time. And the man quickly drinks both shots. You, okay? Rough week. The bartender asks again. Oh yes, my 20-year-old son came out that he is gay. He stole his sister's boyfriend. Now my daughter won't stop crying. The weekend the same man came in. Just bring me a bottle of whiskey. The barman shook his head, asks. Doesn't anyone in your family prefer a woman? The man replied. Yes, apparently my wife does. <laughs> Blonde jokes are plentiful. But here is a joke about a very clever blonde. A blonde walk into a bank to get a loan. I need to borrow $100 for the month, she says. The banker takes her information and runs her credit but can't find a credit report. I'm sorry, he says, but in the absence of a credit record, we'll have to charge 20% interest on the loan, so full payment will be $120 for the month. That's fine, says the blonde. You will also need to give something valuable for collateral on the loan, says the banker. How about my Ferrari? The banker nearly fainted. Okay, he says. I'll print out the papers. A month later, she returned with the money for the loan. The banker asks the blonde, Why did you use a $200,000 car as collateral on a $100 loan? The blonde says. I went on holiday. Where else can I safely park a Ferrari for a month for $20? <laughs> so, this young geeky student got himself a bicycle. Let's find out where and how he got it in the following joke. That's a very nice bike you have there, John. Where did you buy it? I didn't purchase it. Susan gave it to me as a gift. As a gift? I always knew she was into you, but this is something else. Why did she give it to you? Well, you see, Mike, Yesterday, I was strolling in the park, and I saw Susan on this bike. She came to me without saying anything, tossed the bike aside, then she took off all her clothes. Now, you can take whatever you want, John. So I took the bike, said my thanks, and left. Now that was a very good decision, John, because her clothes wouldn't fit you. <laughs> in the next joke, this guy got in trouble with the police and a judge need to decide. A riot at the mayor's office. Mayor, this country is bad. Mayor, this country is bad. Mayor, this country is bad. Hey you, what did you just say to the mayor? 
I said that this country is a disgrace and this country is bad. Well, for that I will arrest you, take you to the police station for tonight, and tomorrow you can go and explain that to the judge. So, what are you here for today, sir? Well, Your Honor, I was shouting at the mayor's office that this country is bad and that it's a disgrace, but I was talking about Iran. Now, you are a police officer and should know better than arresting a man for expressing his views about another country. For this, I am giving you a hefty fine. How bad is this? You go against our country and I get a fine. I told you this country is bad. <laughs> the following joke is about a wife and a statue in her bedroom. Very funny. A woman was in bed with her lover when she heard her husband opening the front door. Hurry, she said. Stand in the corner. She quickly rubbed baby oil all over him, and then she dusted him with talcum powder. Don't move until I tell you to, she whispered. Just pretend you're a statue. What's this, honey? The husband inquired as he entered the room. Oh, it's just a statue, she replied nonchalantly. The Smiths bought one for their bedroom. I liked it so much, I got one for us too. No more was said about the statue, not even later that night when they went to sleep. Around two in the morning, the husband got out of bed, went to the kitchen, and returned a while later with a sandwich and a glass of milk. Here, he said to the statue, eat something. I stood like an idiot at the Smith's for three days, and nobody offered me as much as a glass of water. <laughs> now we have a little Johnny joke about when he was in kindergarten. On the last day of kindergarten, all the children brought presents for their teacher. The florist's son handed the teacher a gift. She shook it, held it up and said, I bet I know what it is. It's some flowers. That's right, shouted the little boy. Then the candy store owner's daughter handed the teacher a gift. She held it up, shook it and said, I bet I know what it is. It's a box of candy. That's right, shouted the little girl. The next gift was from the liquor store owner's son, little Johnny. The teacher held it up and saw that it was leaking. She touched a drop with her finger and tasted it. Is it wine? She asked. No, said little Johnny. The teacher touched another drop to her tongue. Is it juice? She asked. No, he answered. Finally, the teacher said, I give up. What is it? Little Johnny replied, it's a little puppy. <laughs> the next joke is about three Irish brothers. Oh, those Irish are always hilarious. An Irish man walks into a pub. Give me three beers, please, he said. The bartender brings him three beers, and the man proceeds to drink them all. He then orders three more. Sir, says the bartender, you don't have to order three at a time. I can keep an eye on you, and when you get low, I bring you a new one. You don't understand, the man says. I have two brothers, one in Australia and one in the States. We made a vow to each other that every Saturday night we'd still drink together. So right now, my brothers also have three beers and we drink together. What a wonderful tradition, the bartender says, smiling. So it goes on for weeks and weeks until one Saturday, he orders only two drinks. I know your tradition, but why only two drinks? Did one brother die? Oh, my brothers are fine, says the man. I just quit drinking. So, this farmer had a huge problem with pests, and obviously his mother-in-law. You ever notice how mothers-in-laws have a knack for helping you in the most unexpected ways? Especially when you're facing a crisis like this farmer. His strawberry farm was being overrun by birds. Every morning, he would wake up to a field of half-eaten berries. One Sunday, he found himself at his mother-in-law's house for the usual soul-crushing roast dinner. As he sat there, trying to avoid eye contact and her questionable hairdo when it hit him. Back at the farm, he worked through the night. By sunrise, he had a masterpiece, a scarecrow, a terrifyingly accurate renditions of his mother-in-law, and of course, that hair. The next morning, he placed the scarecrow proudly in the center of his field. The birds were speechless and so shocked, some of them even brought back last year's strawberries. <laughs> In this last joke of the day, we bring you a couple. 
that landed themselves in a mental hospital. John and Sue had both been in politics for a good number of years when they eventually landed up in a mental hospital. One day when they were walking past the hospital swimming pool, John suddenly jumped into the deep end. He sunk to the bottom of the pool. Sue jumped in to save him. She swam to the bottom and pulled John out. When the medical director heard this, he immediately ordered her to be discharged from hospital as he now considered her to be mentally stable. He went to tell Sue the good news. Sue, I have good news and bad news. The good news is, you are being discharged. Since you were able to jump in and save John, I think you've regained your senses. The bad news is that John hung himself with his bathrobe belt in the bathroom. I'm sorry, but he's dead. Sue replied, he didn't hang himself. I put him there to dry. <laughs> this family was a farming family and had two sons. Billy is 19 and the younger brother is 10 years old. One day, the neighboring farmer raced onto the farm, demanding to speak to the farmer. The 10-year-old boy responded that his dad went to town. Then I would like to speak with your brother Billy immediately. Once again, the farmer had to be disappointed as Billy went with the young boy's mother to visit Granny. Do you know that your brother Billy has my daughter pregnant? The farmer told the 10-year-old boy. To do the best to run the farm in his father's absence, the 10-year-old boy replied. I see the boy said, I know my dad rent our sheep ram to other farms for 500 bucks to mate with their sheep. And I know that he charges 2000 bucks for hiring out his bull to other farmers. But I don't know what my father charges for Billy. <laughs> this university student was sharing a flat with a roommate. One day he had a knock on the door. There stood his mother making a surprise visit. Immediately, his mother noticed his beautiful young roommate. The way the two of them interacted, the mother could only guess that they were in a relationship. The son picked up that his mother was suspicious and whispered to her, We are only roommates, Mom, nothing else. Two weeks later, the son phoned his mother and asked, Mom, we are missing a golden bracelet. It went missing the night you visited. It was lying on the dining room table. You hadn't by any chance seen it. The mom replied, it's underneath the blankets in her bed. So, where was she sleeping the last two weeks? <laughs> As we all know that men and women are totally different in every aspect. Women laugh at different things than men and appreciate different than men. They see the world differently and experience it differently. Men will probably never understand why this is, but they love them for just how they are. However, sometimes it can be very frustrating. So, this husband despondently said to his wife, we men will never understand how you woman can be so totally different to us. You can be so beautiful, yet so stupid at the same time. The wife responded to this by saying, yes, that is so true. Nature has found a wonderful way to ensure that we are beautiful enough to make you attracted to us. Nature's mistake, however, was then to make us also stupid enough to make us attracted to you men. <laughs> this personal assistant to the managing director complained that her desk has a nasty screw sticking out of it. This screw has been damaging her clothing for some time and after complaining numerous times, no one has done anything about it. Eventually, she got very angry and marched into the MD's office demanding a solution. He apologized and asked her to get a carpenter to fix it on the company's account. But what about my clothes? She asked. Please go and buy a new set of clothing from Petty Cash and put the receipt in the Petty Cash box, the MD proposed. The problem was solved. At the next financial audit, the auditor came to the MD's office to explain a slip found in the petty cash box. It read, $120 for screw on personal assistance desk. <laughs> <laughs> to celebrate 50 years of marriage, this couple booked a golfing weekend at a very expensive golf resort. On the third hole, the husband said to his wife, sweetheart, 
I have something to confess. About 30 years ago, I had a brief affair. It meant nothing to me, and I hope that you can forgive me. His wife was very hurt, but said, My dearest husband, those days are long past and what we have now is very good. They embraced and kissed. Later that day, on the 15th tee box, the wife said to her husband, Before we met, I had a sex change. I used to be a man. Her husband went mad, broke his golf clubs with anger, and threw his bag into the water. You liar, you're a despicable cheat, he shouted. And all these years, you beat me at golf while you were teeing of... from the ladies' tea box. <laughs> Stress is our body's response to pressure. Many different situations or life events can cause stress. It is often triggered when we experience something new or unexpected that threatens our sense of self, or when we feel we have little control over a situation. We use the word in so many ways, but some stresses are worse than others, especially when these stresses are due to self-made issues. So, this boy asked his father what stress is. He hears people speak about it, but he doesn't understand what it is. His father thinks for a moment how to explain to his son. Then he said, stress is when you have a house, a car, a wife, and a girlfriend, and they are all one month late. That is stress. This guy was doing shopping when he noticed this attractive woman waving to him from the other side of the deli. He cannot remember where he had seen her before, but since she was very attractive, he walked over to her and said, Do we know one another? The woman responded that she thinks he is the father of one of her children. As the men have never been dishonest to his wife, he started to think back to his single years. Then it struck him, and he got shivers down his spine. He shyly asked, Are you that stripper that I made love with in the pool at my friend's bachelor's? I am sorry, but we were all very drunk. The woman looks deeply in his eyes and said, Fortunately, not. I am a teacher. And I think your son is in class with me. This preacher has been with his congregation for some time and is very much involved with his community. He, however, has been very concerned with the ease with which his community tells lies. So, one day while finishing his service, he said to the congregation that the following week's service would be very applicable to the congregation. He would propose the congregation read Mark chapter 17 in preparation for the following week's service. The congregation dispersed after the service. The following weekend, as the congregation were sitting in church, he asked which of the congregation could get the time to read through Mark chapter 17, as this would make the day's service easier. Half of the congregation lift their hand in a show of acknowledgement. The preacher then said that it will be a long service that morning since the book of Mark only have 16 chapters. <laughs> This very wealthy businessman's wife just had her birthday. As the husband was too busy with work, he forgot about her birthday. As things stand, their relationship was not very well. He knew that the forgotten birthday was a very expensive mistake. That evening when he got home, he said to his wife, So, you turned 50, he said. Well, that's a very important milestone, and I was thinking, a brand new Mercedes-Benz, a boat cruise, and some jewelry. What do you think? The wife sits there, not very impressed, and said, I would like a divorce, please. The husband's demeanor immediately changes to one of shock, and he said, Well, I was not planning on spending that much money. This husband and his wife have had an argument and is in silent treatment mode. It's a game of cat and mouse in the house to see who will give in first. The husband, however, needs to fly to a very important customer meeting the following day. In their household, 
he is the one battling to get out of bed every morning. Fortunately for him, his wife is up at five every morning to ensure he gets out of bed in time. As he needs to be at the airport early the next day, he decides to write his wife a letter and leave it next to her bed. The letter reads, can you please wake me up at five? Next morning, the husband wake up surprised to see that it is 9 a.m. already. He missed his flight and his meeting. Next to his bed is a letter. It reads, it's 5 a.m. You must wake up. <laughs> this guy was in the army when he received the dreadful Dear Johnny letter from his girlfriend. The letter read, Dear Johnny, it is with great regret that I must inform you of the end to our relationship. As you have been away for so long, I could wait no longer. I have a new love in my life. I kindly ask you to return the picture of me that I gave you before you left. Now, Johnny was heartbroken for a couple of days, then he came up with a master plan. He went and borrowed pictures of all his army mate's girlfriends and sent it off to his girlfriend, including her picture. His note read as follows. I am very sorry to read your note, but as I cannot remember all my girlfriends, I had to send you all their pictures. I kindly ask that you take your picture out of the bundle of pictures and send me back all my other girlfriend's pictures. <laughs> this guy came home one day, ran into his house, jumped onto his most favorite chair and shouted to his wife, quick, quick, bring me a beer before it starts. His wife dropped everything she was busy with, ran to the kitchen, pulled out a beer, ran to her husband, and handed him the beer. She looked at the TV as if expecting a major football game. After a minute, the man shouted again, quick, bring me a beer before it starts. This time, she walked to the kitchen on her time, got him a beer, and glared at him. When he shouted again for a beer, she waltzes into the living room, shouted, I am not your maid and don't tell me you are going to sit there the whole night watching TV again. The husband glared at his wife and then responded, There it starts. <laughs> the neighbors of this house phoned the police because they heard a gunshot from their next door neighbors. When the police arrived on the scene, they found a wife standing with a gun in one hand and a floor mop in the other hand. On the wet floor, lay her dead husband. The police officer asks the wife, what happened here? I shot my husband because he walked over my wet floor. He knew not to walk over my wet floor. The officer immediately contacted his supervisor to explain the situation to him. Have you arrested the wife? The supervisor asked. No, the officer replied. Why not? The supervisor wanted to know. You have a body, a murder weapon, and a suspect. Why haven't you arrested her yet? Sir, the officer replied, this floor is still wet. <laughs> Man goes to the police to report his wife missing. Tell me, sir, how tall is your wife? I don't know, the man said, but she is shorter than me. The color of her hair, the officer asked. I don't know, she changes it every month. The man said, the color of her eyes, the officer asks. Maybe brown, I don't know. Is she slim or a more fully built woman? Not slim, the man replied. What clothes did she wear the last time you saw her? I don't know, the man said. A dress or some pants, I think. Was anyone with her, sir? Oh, just Romeo, my trusty Labrador. He has got a golden chain around his neck weighs 45.25 pounds, brown eyes, a white dot under his chest, and the nails on his right foot is slightly shorter than the nails on his left foot. <laughs> this man's neighbor came over to his house needing some assistance. Her husband is away on business and a water pipe burst in her house. I am getting water all over my floor. Can't you come and help me please? The man's wife told the neighbor that her husband is very handy and that he will gladly go and assist. The man shrugged and said, let me just quickly go and fetch my tools and I will be right there to help. 
Once there, the man fixed the broken pipe quickly and helped the neighbor to clean up the place. When done, she thanked him and said jokingly, You are so handy. I think I must marry you instead. Can you imagine that? You assist people out of the kindness of your heart, and then they threaten to ruin your life. <laughs> this beautiful blonde with a skimpy skirt needed to get onto the bus, but she became aware that her skirt was too tight to take the first high step onto the bus. Half embarrassed, she smiled at the bus driver and slipped her hand behind her back to unzip the skirt a little bit to allow for her leg to lift far enough. This did not work, so she again followed the procedure and unzipped the skirt a little bit more. Once again, the amount she unzipped was just not enough, so she smiled at the bus driver, unzipped the skirt a little bit more. At this stage, a big biker dude standing behind her picked her up and placed her on the step of the bus. She went mad and screamed at the guy for touching her. Well, I thought you would be okay, he said, after you unzipped my pants three times. <laughs> These two old ladies passed away and met in heaven. They knew each other while they were still alive, so immediately kicked off a conversation. What did you die from? The first lady asks. I froze to death, the second lady said. Was that painful? The first lady asked. No, not at all. I shivered a bit and then fell asleep. So, I went peacefully. And you, the other lady asks. Massive heart attack. I thought my husband was having an affair, so I told him that I was going shopping. A short time later, I came into the house and found him watching TV. I was so sure that the other woman was in the house that I looked everywhere. I got so exhausted that I had a heart attack. The other lady then said, if only you looked in the freezer, we would both still be alive. <laughs> this man wakes up from a coma after weeks in the intensive care unit. The first thing he sees is the face of his trusty wife sitting next to his bed. As he is very weak and trying to speak, she moves forward to hear him better. He whispers, You were there when I awoke from both of my double heart bypasses. You were there when I awoke from both of my motor car accidents. You were there when I had the emergency operation after the robbers shot me. Your face is always the first thing I see when I wake up from my trauma. I just want to say, the man now very weak, stop for a moment. The wife says, don't worry, you are tired. She, however, moved closer. But what did you want to say? The man using all his strength whispered, you are bad luck. <laughs> there is not a place in the world where you don't have problems with flies, sometimes more and sometimes less. The worst place to have them is in the kitchen. Many methods to get rid of them have been tried in the past, but the fly swatter have proven itself to be the champion. This husband was fighting the flies with the fly swatter when his wife walked into the kitchen. And how many flies have you killed so far? Five in total, the man replied, three male and two female. But how do you know if they were male or female flies? As they all look the same, the wife asked. The husband explained that it is quite simple three of the flies were sitting on the beer can when I got them, and the other two were sitting on the telephone. <laughs> These two babies were sitting next to one another in their little baby cots. The one baby said to the other, do you know if you are a little boy or a little girl? I don't know, said the second baby. What do you mean you don't know, asked the first baby. I don't know how to look if I am a little boy or a little girl. No one have showed me yet. Well, I do say the first baby. Hang on, I will have a look. He maneuvered himself into the second baby's cot and then disappear underneath the blanket. After about a minute, he resurfaced with a big grin on his face. You are a little girl. And how do you know that the second baby ask? Well, 
You see the first baby explains, I have blue socks and you have pink socks. Now what were you thinking? <laughs> this man was laying on his deathbed and very weak. His trusty wife was sitting next to him holding his hand. As the man gets weaker, he whispers to his wife, there is something very important that I must tell you before I die. Then I will be able to go in peace. His wife tries to keep him calm, but he persists and starts whispering again. During our marriage, I have been unfaithful to you. First there was my secretary, then your sister, then your best friend, and just this once with your mother. As I need to go in peace, I ask of you to forgive me. The man is very weak now, so his wife says, I know all about this. You should relax. Be calm. Don't think about it. It is all in the past. Just let the poison do its work. <laughs> A friend of mine told me about when he took his son for his first drink in the bar. Not knowing what the boy would like, he started by getting him a light beer. His son pulled a nasty face as he was not very impressed. Secondly, the dad ordered him a much sweeter rink this time it was a gin and tonic, but once again his son just pulled a nasty face in disparagement. Now, the father ordered a whiskey and soda, but once again the results from his son were the same. Now, every time the boy doesn't have the drink, the father proceeds to have the drink himself as he would not like to waste money like that. As you can imagine, the father became quite intoxicated as the night progressed, and many attempts to impress his boy failed. He almost fell three times, pushing his son's pram home. <laughs> this man, who was in financial difficulty, went to see his bank manager. The bank manager said, please sit down. The man replied, I am quite comfortable on my knees. Thank you. <laughs> a female housefly can lay up to 500 eggs over the span of just three to four days and repeat the cycle multiple times throughout her life. Houseflies typically live 15 to 25 days. So what you call a fly without wings, a walk. This old lady walked into a pet store to buy a parrot. After choosing which one she wanted, the store owner said that she could not have that one as it was saying the nastiest words. The old lady said, that's okay, I will teach it to behave. So the deal was done. As soon as she came home, the parrot started saying the nastiest words. So the old lady put the parrot into the freezer for 10 seconds. And when she took him out, she said, are you going to say those words again? Again, the parrot said the words. So this time, it went into the freezer for 30 seconds. When it came out, the parrot said, Okay, okay. I won't say those words again. Just tell me. What on dear earth did those chickens do? <laughs> Two guys were sitting in a bar having a beer. One guy said that he hasn't seen his wife in two weeks since she went to buy milk. The other guy said, that's bad. How are you coping? The first guy said, no, not too bad. I am using powdered milk. <laughs> the waiter is being called over in this restaurant. Waiter, there's a fly in my soup. Couldn't be, sir. The cook used them all in the raisin bread you had for starters. <laughs> My son told me that this girl at school was yelling at him the whole time. I asked him what he did about it. On nothing, he said, I just sat there wondering what I did wrong. I still don't know. Amazing to think that my son at nine years old is ready for marriage. <laughs> this man went to ask for money from his bank manager. 
The bank manager said, I have done more for you than your mother. I carried you for more than 12 months. <laughs> this boy said to his father, Dad, did you know that in some countries you only get to know who your wife really is until you are married? The father replied, My son, it is like that. Everywhere in the world, So, this woman went to pay the pharmacist visit. She asks the pharmacist for some arsenic. The pharmacist said that she must explain to him exactly why she wants this very deadly chemical. The woman replied, I would like to kill my husband. The pharmacist said that for that reason, he cannot give her some arsenic. The woman opened her purse, took out a picture, and showed it to the pharmacist. In the picture is her husband, with the pharmacist's wife in bed. The pharmacist replied, why didn't you just say you had a prescription? <laughs> this man went to the doctor because of some problem. After analyzing the patient, the doctor sat him down to discuss his situation. Sir, he said, you only have three months left to live. The man immediately called for a second opinion. After seeing the second doctor, the doctor came up with the same prognosis. He only has three months left to live. He said to the doctor, what can I do? The doctor said, sir, I can give you my non-medical opinion. Do you have a girlfriend? No, the man replied, haven't had one for years. Now go and get yourself a girlfriend. Go and do shopping with her every day. Listen to all her stories and spend all your time with her. The man said, Will that heal me, doctor? No, the doctor said, but it will be the longest three months of your life. <laughs> this bear walks into a bar. The barman, very surprised to see the bear in the bar, asks, Can I help you? The bear grabbed a seat, sat down, and said, Can I have a whiskey? The bear then paused for about three seconds and then said, and a soda, please. The barman raised his eyebrows and then asked, why the big pause? The bear lift his front foot, have a look at it and said, I don't know, I was born like that. <laughs> this gentleman went to dine at this seafood restaurant. He was served by this young blonde waitress. She asked, can I help you with anything, sir? Yes, the gentleman said, I would like a lobster tail, please. The blonde waitress cleared her throat and then started. Once upon a time, there was this beautiful little lobster. <laughs> this young girl got a bicycle for Christmas and was riding it in the street in front of her house when policemen on horseback rode by. He stopped and asked if she got the bicycle from Father Christmas. The girl replied that indeed she did. The police officer got of his horse and wrote her a ticket for $50. Father Christmas forgot to put a reflector on the back of your bicycle, he said, and this is what this ticket is for. Now, as the police officer climbed back onto his horse, the girl asked him, tell me officer, did you also get this horse from Father Christmas? Indeed I did, the officer replied. Why are you asking? The girl said, you should tell Father Christmas that a horse's a-hole sits underneath its tail and not on its back. <laughs> this husband and his wife were sitting in the kitchen alone having a chat. The husband said to his wife, Your mother has been staying with us for the last 20 years. Don't you think it's time that she gets a place of her own? The wife angrily replied, my mother. I thought she was your mother. <laughs>